Hi guys, welcome back to the Nevermind Poly Podcast. My name is Matt, I'm your host, and we chat to rock and metal bands from around the world. How are you doing? How are you living? I hope you're all doing well, wherever you're listening to the podcast. We appreciate you for checking out the show. My guest this time around is the excellent Breed77. I sat down with Paul and Danny of Breed77 to chat all about well everything the band really they've got uh, they've released a new single recently we talked about that we talked about the future of the band where they've been where they're going it's all very very good and very very exciting i want to do a massive shout out to jamie for setting this one up who looks after breed 77 uh, and i'd also like to do a shout out to breed 77 themselves for just coming on the coming on the podcast we appreciate it this is my conversation with danny and paul of breed 77 on the nevermind Poly podcast let's get to it Hello everybody, welcome. We have some exciting news. This podcast is part of the Nevermind Poly Podcast Network. Why do we have a network? I hear you ask, Matt. Well, because we have two podcasts on the network. We have the Nevermind Poly Podcast, the main parent podcast of the network, and then we have the brand new baby of the network, and that is Doom Riff Podcast. What is Doom Riff Podcast? Who is Doom Riff Podcast? Doom Riff Podcast is myself, Henry, and my good friend Brandon all sitting down to discuss music, to discuss life, to have a bit more of a chilled, relaxed approach to podcasting. You can find us on all Spotify, Apple, all of those good places. We are only solely on Instagram, on the social media currently, so search us out, just search Doom Riff Podcast. Um, we hope you see you over there. We've released two episodes to date, and um, yeah, we hope you enjoy it. We shall see you in a bit. On with the show. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the Nevermind Poly Podcast. My name is Matt. I'm your host, and we chat to rock and metal bands from around the world. And today, I'm chatting to two gentlemen of the band Breed77. I've got in Gibraltar, I've got the lovely Paul, and in London, I've got the lovely Danny. How are we both doing, gents? How's things? Oh, good, man. Oh, good. <laughs> awesome stuff. So first and foremost, I want to take take a moment to say thank you for coming on this Bank Holiday Monday, which, you know what, Bank Holiday should be just reserved to not doing fucking anything, unless you're in a key <laughs> service, like a hospital or things like that. You know, I appreciate you have to do those things. But yeah, not doing a po- podcasting is not essential, uh, and press is not essential on Bank Holiday. So I, te- I, I massively am thankful for you taking the time. Um, we're here today to talk everything Breed 77, but the one thing that I kind of wanted to touch on straight out of the gate is your brand new single, Out of the Line. How's the response been? What's been going on with the band? Just give me some, give me a flavour of what's been happening in the last uh, few weeks and months, because it all seems like it's gearing up and getting very exciting for you guys. Well, yeah, well, we, um, we've we been planning this uh, this return for a while. It's uh, It's been more complicated than than we thought. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, the band is split up um, between two countries, but um, we've been very, very busy behind the scenes. And we thought, you know, like we were ready to uh, to unleash the beast this year. So um, uh, we started off the year releasing um, our first single, End of the Line. Uh, um, and it's uh, I think it's uh, it's it's a great it's a great kind of. Uh, Touched on about uh, you know about for breed seven seven in in twenty twenty four, it sounds like breed but it's breed like you had never heard it before. It's it's uh, it's breed after after these years and um, it's been very well received. Um, we managed to like get a, a rope in our ex drummer do percussion on it. We've got like it's got a real vibe to it. Um, video did really well and just dying to play it live now you know because it's uh it's it's all well and good doing all this behind the scenes stuff but what we really thrive on is that interaction live you know to go out and 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 put ourselves out there so that's at the the point that we're at now absolutely and i I just want to say on behalf of uh people who are a fan of bands right I, I understand why people why bands have to do it, but it's the it's the coming soon. It's the announcement of an announcement of an announcement. And you guys have just kind of you've kind of quietly kind of been away from from the kind of uh, the social media and stuff and just been cooking and kind of been mm-hmm. like when you guys come back, it's like 
oh, okay. Like, it's kind of like it's a nice return that you didn't kind of expect, if that makes sense. Because, yeah, from, from a point of view of a fan, hearing uh, we, we're announcing things soon, it's like, cool, when? And they're announcing more things. Do you know what I mean? So it, it's kind of nice to actually finally have something concrete out there in the world that we can gravitate towards, listen to, watch all of that good stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to, to kind of... Um, something I like to do with my artists and guests when I get the opportunity to sit down with them is... I want to take it right, right, right back to the very, very beginning of your musical journeys, because I think it's really interesting to see where that initial spark came from when it comes to music. So I can remember mine, mine was, um, I was around three or four years old, right? And I was going, I was with my parents in my dad's car and I heard the song Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath and it scared the fucking shit out of me, right? I didn't know what it was, but that was that kind of initial spark of like, I don't know what that is, but that's cool. Do you kind of have something that, that sticks out in your in your minds, and, and where did your kind of musical uh, sort of journey begin for you guys? Danny. Yeah, definitely, definitely is a uh, it's metal for me. You know, I'm a, uh, although um, the the band um, like we we draw like influence from many uh, sources, but especially for me it was Iron Maiden that made it um, back when the when they got uh, around the number of the Beast era. I was a kid, I remember school still and. And it was the covers of the albums and the whole, um, uh, um, you know, the, the lyrics. It was like amazing. It was, it was a feeling of like uh, just got me hooked into metal. And since then, well, I'm still going. And mind you, at the time, you didn't have the, the socials like nowadays or the internet. So it was a more mysterious, a bit more. You just heard the albums. That was very difficult to watch uh, videos at the time, only in Top of the Pops or whatever. So, uh, um it was kind of a, a very mysterious and very um, uh, completely a new thing coming out. So yeah, Absol very special. Absolutely, and that's the thing as well. Kind of back back in kind of it, I don't want to say those days or make you guys feel old or anything, but back in in those kind of times, it was a more visual thing. Because you look at the number of the beast artwork, for example, that is a visually striking image. You see that in a record store, you like either you're scared of it and you're like, I don't want to fucking listen to that or you're intrigued by it and like, what is that? And you pick it up and you buy it and whatever else. So it, and that's the thing nowadays, I think the social media is kind of, it's homogenized, if that's the right word, kind of all of this stuff. We have access to everybody all of the time. And sometimes I think the mystique of a band can be kind of lost. And that's why I love, you know, um, things like Ghost and Sleep Token, who, you know, perhaps aren't my taste in music, but they're kind of bringing that kind of mystique back to the band and being like, well, you don't actually know who they are. But that's, that's kind of a cool thing, just a little side touch. How, how about you, um, Paul? Well, very, very similar and something that, that, that we share in common, like... Um... When I was uh, when I was uh, very young, like I used to, uh, I used to draw a lot, and um, I had a cousin who was into Iron Maiden, and I saw the cover for Number of the Beast, and while I propped up the 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 record sleeve to mm -hmm. uh, to draw it, like my cousin would put the the record on, so I was like, you know, like younger younger of an age that you'd be buying your own music. And uh, and already been exposed to to Iron Maiden and uh, and the theater of that album, you know. Like uh, for me, the the artwork and the, and the music from that album will, will forever be intrinsically linked because uh, it, like Danny was saying, it's it it really got you had to use your imagination back then, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, as you say, you know, we're saturated with every little tidbit of information, be it true or not, but everybody reckons they know their favorite bands inside out you know from uh, sure. what google what google tells them is true and then you know and like that's one of the the one of the fa the failings of modern society is that everybody just you know um reckons that they can be an authority and everything by just spending a couple of minutes browsing and Absolutely. and surfing through through pages but back then it, you know you like everyone had a different kind of impression of a band, especially like I had made, like they had all these visuals. So uh, they would speak to people in different ways and everyone would have a very different impression. And down in Gibraltar, you know, it was, uh, it wasn't very often that, you know, you get uh, someone like I Maiden playing close enough that you'd venture off, you know, to, to be able to see them live. So mm -hmm. all you had really was this kind of what your imagination had kind of built up as, as a, as a picture of what this band was and meant to you, you know, and I think it, 
it touched on so many different levels that uh that i i think back then you know people who got into music back then tend to have invested more of themselves into it and maybe it's a longer lasting kind of uh appreciation of uh, of the band absolutely and I, I think that that's perfect because that's the thing as well i kind of wanted to uh and you you have to forgive me gentlemen my my podcast and my general demeanor is a bit tongue-in-cheek right so being in a band I, I feel like um again correct me if you feel like i'm wrong when you announce like a tour for example because again living in gibraltar i can completely understand bands you know the, the trajectory in terms of the size of of Gibraltar is not massive. Do you know what I mean? There's not a massive pool of, of people who potentially might go to a gig. So you might have to go to, to the mainland or whatever. But like when you see like you put a tour out and people go, ah, oh, why aren't you coming to Manchester or Liverpool? Even though on, you know, a train line, that's like an hour, an hour and a half at most. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, I think because you've had that kind of growing up, it's kind of like that appreciation of being like, no, that's fine. You can just get on a train or a bus or just, do you know what I mean? Make that short little distance, that little sacrifice. And I think as well, that is a nice thing. I, one of my, some of my favorite gigs of when I've had to physically like, not just pay money for the ticket, but kind of made an event of it. Like, you know, I, I'm only two hours from London, but it's like, if I'm going to London, I'm staying overnight. I'm making, I'm going for it, especially if it's like a Friday or Saturday, I'm going to have some drinks. I'm going to make it like the event of the weekend, if, if that makes sense. Is that something that you guys kind of feel like for your gigs and, and kind of, and as punters as well, going to other people's gigs, how, how do you find find that kind of thing? No. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I actually, um, I experienced that because uh, I was, born, although I live in London now, but I was, I was uh, raised in Gibraltar and I remember going the first, professional gig I ever, a big gig I saw was Guns N' Roses in Seville. It was with um, Amazing. Um, Soundgarden and Face No More supporting. And it's what you were explaining. Uh, I was uh, quite young, so uh, it was one of my first outings. We went with all mates and we made the day out of it. We had to go all the way to Seville, which is in Spain, which is uh, uh, in, in, a, in, pre in a way it's a different country. You know, we had mm -hmm. to cross the frontier go to Spain and then spend the night there. And it was a big thing. So uh, what, what, you, what you're saying, uh, it's, it's happened to me just at the beginning. Although nowadays I live in London, so it doesn't matter. I just go yeah. <laughs> to any the games. Band, yeah. the, the band's but at the time, I, I, I really know what you, what you, what you mean here. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of touch on something uh, very specific to Paul, if we can, for just for a moment, because I wanted to discuss the the event that happened in summer 2022, where you look like you severely fucked your leg, sir. I, I want to kind of <laughs> ask, I was going again, you know, like you kind of mentioned, like, you know, you feel like you're the authority on bands and things like that. That's why at the start of this conversation, I said, I'm not a fucking journalist. I've got no formal qualifications. I'm just a man who likes your music. So... <laughs> It's kind of like I was doing some uh, bits and bobs on, on, on that front, the kind of research things. Kind of wanted to ask, A, how did that happen? B, <laughs> did that kind of reassess kind of your your energy towards the band? Because I feel like, again, not in a band, so you feel like you correct me if you feel like I'm wrong, but it's kind of like with this podcast, for example, I've literally just had this conversation with my wife to be maybe half an hour ago. It's kind of like I've been doing this for four years now. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm really enjoying it. But kind of where's the next step? Where's the next thing? And you kind of become a little bit somewhat complacent because you're like, we're just doing the thing. We just keep day to day. We're just doing the thing, doing the thing. And then like when you, like you say, you fuck your leg, for example, you have a serious injury, it forces you to stop. And I guess kind of like the pandemic as well in 2020 was like, cool, everyone has to stop. And it's like you kind of then take stock of what you've got and where you're at. Kind of talk, talk me through that if we can, because I think that's you know, potentially quite an interesting thing. I think the... um uh, my my leg my leg injury was more of a of a delay because we were already busy behind the scenes. For sure. And, uh, For sure. That that was more of a of a delay rather than uh, than uh, you know than a touchstone like a like a marker mm -hmm. in my life with, to reassess the the pandemic. On on the other hand, the pandemic was really the the kick in the pants that we needed to start engaging uh, and. Uh, you know, fully aware of how hard the task would be to uh, to return, to 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 revive the band, wake it up was I think was the the terminology we were using, and uh, yeah, that that was a, the, the, I think the the pandemic how quickly like all your freedoms can be taken away, you know you couldn't like 
traveled the world, like you thought before, people looked at each other different. Um, for me, at least on a, for me on a personal level, the, the, the pandemic was one of those moments when you think, you know, like you don't have many chances to do, you know, what you love. And uh, and we had uh, had put Breed to sleep for a while, and uh, the thing was that you know like he couldn't sleep much longer. We we really, I think all of us really needed to be uh, to be making music together again, and 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 to be to be in Breed again, you know. So uh, that was like the the more important thing. Like the my leg injury was just me being crazy, which I carry on <laughs> doing like. Uh, it was riding electric skateboards. I still ride electric skateboards, mountain bikes, uh, big motorbikes. Uh, if it's dangerous, I like it. So uh, yeah, that's going to that. change. <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to like um, put too much of a finer point on, on kind of twenty twenty because it's it's been done to death. It's been talked about to death. But I feel like it, it goes without saying that because I think we can look at the pandemic and kind of as music fans, myself, and obviously you guys in bands and being fans of music, like we very nearly lost it all like in genuine like the whole fucking music thing just collapsed and, and you know there was a time a brief period in time of that kind of period where it's like is this genuinely the end of everything that we kind of you know is this the big meteorite that's going to take us all out do you know what i mean so to be back playing shows and, and back kind of um you know performing and being creative i guess that's kind of a really nice thing right because the only the only good thing that's come out of the pandemic was doing this fucking podcast and this started between me and two friends who were one was in wales one was in middlesbrough and we were like we can't go out to the pub we can't let's just talk some shit about music and that's kind of how we are here today four four years down the line so that's the only good takeaway that i have for that um but yeah kind of but listen man listen dude the 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 music industry has recovered from the pandemic it sure. hasn't recovered from brexit brexit is no. fucking killing it that's what's yeah. fucking killing it for sure for sure I, I wanted to ask kind of from a creative point of view how do you because again danny being being in london you being in gibraltar how do you find the creative process because obviously you know planes and things exist and you can go and do that but obviously that's a lot of money do you do it all, uh when you do get together how do you kind of create how is this these singles and stuff coming together where's this technology thanks to technology the same as we are having a conversation here <laughs> mm, we, sure. uh, we 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 exchange music and uh uh, I think it's a, uh, it's a, uh, but, but uh, it's a modern thing. I remember, like many years ago, well, not many, years, but but I think it was be uh, before the pandemic. Uh, reading about In Flames uh, is a band I like from Sweden, and apparently uh, they had uh, composed an album um, whilst one of the guys used to live uh, in the mountain sides uh, that snowed it was snowed off from the other guys, and they actually composed and did. And did uh, this album? They did. I, I don't remember which one exactly album it was, but they had done everything. Like everybody living in different places, and since then that was something that hit me. I'm like, oh, it's it's, it's doable nowadays. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a, this is a while ago. I mean, like, but I, I already knew like there was a way to make it, and it's technology. You know, we, we record each other ideas, send it to each other. We then have a conversation like we are having in Zoom or WhatsApp or whatever, mm -hmm. um, video chat, and. Uh, it's possible in the old days you couldn't do that uh, because unless you call somebody from a payphone or from your home, this is impossible. So um, yeah, it's uh, you know it's made people come closer this way. It's now it's possible. Uh, Ten years ago, it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Anything, anything to Apple? Yeah, it's um, you make the best of the situation you have you know ideally we'd be able to sit in a room for like eight hours a day you know but like there's reality like uh um like there's no illusion like you know like the band has been asleep for a while we all have like day jobs we have like a regular life we have mortgages and rents and bills and stuff so um like you said you know we've got to do we, we you know, it would be ideal if we could all fly to the same location and 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 spend. But we do that as much as as our wallet permits, and uh, and for the rest of it, you know, we just bounce back ideas back and forth with you know the sterility of uh, of uh, messaging and what have you. But uh, you know, it's um, 
hopefully like you know like uh, the, the 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 better that that we do like in this year and and with this first album that we put out you know like will d define how we make the next one yeah of course and, and that's the thing as well uh, obviously we spoke a, a little bit about kind of things cooking behind the scenes and you know you, you guys are working super hard and things i, I kind of wanted wanted to ask like where and how do you, what is the kind of, without, again, I feel like I'm asking the magician how to reveal the trick, right? But in terms of your band, in terms of, of Breed, how does a kind of a, a song come together? Is it kind of the lyrics first? Is it a, a melody first, a guitar? How does it all kind of work? Because I find that kind of concept really, really interesting when I talk to bands. I don't think there's rules because every song has a different story. Mm. So uh, it's impossible to... Um... Uh, some songs, the music comes first. Sometimes the idea is the vocal line. Sometimes it's the lyric. Sometimes it's a like kind of a a, a theme to a. a so uh, th there's no rules. Uh, uh, different songs come out differently, and uh, the, the the final work um, uh, um, it, it's it's what matters. Some songs really come really quickly, and you, you finish them. Some of them has loads of work, and you end up going around in circles, and then changing things, and then changing again, and and until uh, they the, the become what you what you want to hear, so yeah, there's no rules or or formula. No, for sure. I I think as well. Like again, correct me if you feel like I'm wrong. It's I I personally, as a, a creative individual, I'm a creative can't say the word creative control freak. That's why I can't have an, any other co-host in there because I want to have everything how I would like it, how it's you know. How do you find it as a group of individuals? You know, you're all friends at the end of the day. You're all in a band and you're all, you know, you're all creatively individual. How do you kind of, because for example, you bring you bring a guitar riff to the, to the table and you go, I think this is really sick. And the rest of the band go, yeah, that's sick. But maybe just, and again, I don't play guitar, so don't come at me, everybody. But like, maybe like drop it down an octave or, you know, maybe change this up. And you're kind of like, no, but I really like that. Do you kind of have <laughs> kind of internal kind of uh, tossles and things like that? Because again, just speaking for, maybe I'm just projecting on you boys. Maybe, I don't know. But, you know, being a, a creative control freak myself, I would find that really difficult. How do you guys find that in terms of the creative uh, side of it? That's the, uh, the, the difference between being a solo artist and being in a group. Is sure. that in, a, in yeah. a group, you have to be fundamentally aware mm -hmm. that, the the whole is worth more than the sum of its parts so um you've got to be aware that the reason that you are playing and making music with these guys is because the um the result of uh, of that interaction that dynamic is what brings up the 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 the, the music you no know, the the music that, that that you really really like um it's uh it's just a case of like sometimes, yeah. Sometimes if you fight for an idea that you you really like, and and usually you know whoever you know like uh, when you fight for something, it's because you really believe in it, and and usually within that band, band dynamic, uh, people understand how we you know what bits that other people really like, and and uh, and it's about forming, you know, like it's about. I've always used the analogy, you know, like the uh, uh, the the band is a mother birthing a child, and the child is a song, and you do everything for the best of the child. So whatever's best for the song is what needs to be done, and you need to take a lot of the times you need to take yourself out of that. You know, there's really no room for ego in a band, even though you've got loads of bands with egotistical characters, you know. 201 every single story ends in tragedy you know it's always some kind of disaster uh in a band you've got to be you know yeah like you're, you're a team you're a you're a you're a you know you're a group and uh and that's what makes you strong and that's what you need to really anchor into and and i think that's the solution to any kind of strife be it from a creative standpoint or any other um thing that hits you that you know that that in a band you know like uh, you don't have to sort it out on your own it's five guys and uh five guys isn't that like burger place or something yeah it um, is yeah nice <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's the beauty of being in a band you know or else we just be solo artists and uh without if you're a solo artist you don't have a sounding board you know you don't have someone to tell you hey dude that idea is crap and you know sometimes, and I, sometimes I, you need that you know you need that 
I, I think you've you've fully hit the nail on the head of why why this is a solo venture for me. <laughs> As you were talking, I was just gone. Oh yeah, he's ringing a lot true with me there. <laughs> you should have stopped me. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so I wanted to talk about it as well because um, you know, when you when a band is a band to me at least is when you're touring and when you're when you're seeing people when you're in your audience, whether that's a sport, whether that's a festival, whether that's a headliner, you guys are heading out on a headliner um, with uh, three shows in the UK. Um, with support from Seething Akira, who are fantastic, big fan of those bands of, of that I band. Five shows in the UK, five. But, oh, sorry, if it's a five, my mistake. My, my apologies again. Not a journalist, <laughs> but yeah, five, five five shows in the UK. Um, I wanted to kind of ask, how does kind of the the tour prep come? Because you guys have been in in the band for for a long time. You've been around the world with this band. I kind of wanted to ask, is there something you know? You're double double checking that you're you're packed. So if I tell you tomorrow you're going on tour, what's the one thing you're double double checking? And the only wrong answer for this is your passport because you need that anyway. You're definitely checking that. But like, <laughs> people have said to me like headphones is a big one. Like they're like I love the boys in my band, but I just need to have a little bit of a little bit of meat out. Is there anything that you're double double checking before you leave? Whoa. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm personally a disaster, so I'll, I'll leave everything for like uh, the last minute, and then uh, forget half the things I wanted to take. <laughs> so, <laughs> for sure, that's me. <laughs> used to be a there used to be a time that we were going on tour. It was the advent of like social media and what have you, and I'd have to be taking the laptop and the, this that the speaker so we could mix something and all this shit. And now you just take your phone, you know, and uh, <laughs> at least that's one one of the uh, practical uses of uh, of of your phone, you know, like that's not like just mind numbing, scrolling, what have you. You know, it's a it's a bit of a lifeline when you're out on tour now. Absolutely. Um, so this question I, I've put in specifically for you guys as a band, because like I say, been around the world tours with with hundreds hundreds of bands acro across the years and things. So if you could, if I could tell you you're going on tour tomorrow, but you could pick two bands you've previously been on tour with, who would you pick to go back on tour with? They don't if they're not if they're no longer like active, we can bring them back. But if there's any <laughs> kind of uh, artists or bands across your across your tenure in breed that you've been like they were really good or they were really fun or, or anything like that. Well, there's loads of really, really cool bands that that uh, that are that are friends that um that it's a hell of a lot of fun to tour with. Machine Heads, crazy fun to tour with. Very generous and very uh you know it's a it's a very good cool atmosphere. Uh, Il Nino, who are you know like uh, our our bros, you know we'd go out with them in a heartbeat. It's always been fun. Uh, Thirty Six Crazy Fist again, our bros. Uh, and uh, you know, like uh, we've always had tons of fun on tour, and mm. uh, and if if I was to wake up the next morning and any of the bands we've been on tour with would be there, I'd be pleased as punch. Absolutely. A any any of the spring to mind for you, Danny? Well, we've had, like Paul said, like uh, um, uh, we've had like so so many adventures and experience with many bands. Um, I mean, we, we actually didn't go on tour, but the um, we we actually supported Black Sabbath once in the Astoria, so oh, that was uh, with Ozzy Osbourne and Legends, you know, like so. Mm. That 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 wasn't. Uh, I would love to play with them, but like it's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> uh, Ozzy's ret retired already, and they're too old. But um, as well, um, yeah, we, we were lucky enough to um, to to um, um, support Megadeth as well. You know, loads of bands that have been our childhood heroes so um yeah we'll be lucky in that sense absolutely um that, that's the thing as well i, I feel like there's a, a a little bit a little bit of kinship here because like i say uh, so I've, I've done 330 odd i'm not sure the exact number episodes at this point and i've chatted to some of my musical heroes so to hear you guys being like you know genuinely stoked to play with people who you've looked up to it's kind of a, it's a nice kind of synergy in, in that respect um i've got a couple of final questions for you both um 
I'll be honest, this is where the podcast goes a little bit silly for maybe two questions, and then I bring it right back to a nice deep question to end it on. So, but I feel like you've you've kind of tickled my ego a little bit. You've tickled my tickled my pickle, if you will, um, when you've talked about um, the bands you've toured with and the kind of good things you've had. So I'm hoping you've got a good answer for me. Where is the weirdest or the strangest place you've ever played a show? Now, it, when I say weird or when I say strange, it doesn't have to be like it was one man and his dog. What I'm kind of referring to is where you've arrived at the venue or you've gone to a place and you've all looked around each other and gone, who the fuck booked us here? What are we doing here? And it could either have been a great show, it could be a terrible show, but it's just something that sticks out in your mind of just thinking, that was a weird experience. Now, it's going to be the early days when we were like, uh, we, we, we used to play anywhere. And, uh, and, and we used to get a van and just go around the, the UK and Ireland uh, uh, because we, we, we toured a lot in Ireland at the beginning of our careers. Uh, we didn't even have an album out, and I think we were there. So I could say there was a place in um, in Limerick, like mm-hmm. I don't I didn't even think bands went there back then, and it was so tiny that I, I don't know how we fitted, and we were just five of us. <laughs> like so, uh, it, it's funny we, we've we've had all sorts of places, you know, and um, I had to um, to think hard straight at like uh, so many weird places, but I would think that Limerick gig was super tiny. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I think I, I, that's I, I got a few. I got a few. <laughs> um, we played Portugal once and we were on this tour that was kind of a regional tour because what we used to do back in the day was rather than have like an international scope that you're touring kind of the world at once, you'd go and you'd hook up with someone that was kind of mid-level to big in their country and, and you go and you play a bunch of dates over there. And we played in Portugal once, and one of the dates we were playing, it was a small club dates and stuff, but one of the dates was a football stadium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like random football stadium, you know, like there's only like three, four hundred, five hundred people come to the shows, which is awesome in the club. Mm-hmm. But the football stadium, it, it's it's a bit weird, you know. And the one memory I have of that football stadium is that um, during sound check, there's a pig kind of walking around um, um, the, the the football pitch. Mm-hmm. And um, when we come back after sound check, after having showered the hotel and stuff, we come back and there's this guy with a massive pig on a spit and he's dousing it with this branch he's putting in a bucket and he's got all his marinade and he's just like dousing it and stuff like that. Dude, I patted that pig and I ate it, and he was delicious. Amazing! So, so just to just to get to get it right, essentially, so that you're playing in a in a football stadium that is not even like you know an eighth full, like there's like you say, yeah. it's a football stadium, and there's a pig, a man walking around with a pig, and at the end of the show, essentially that's your dinner. But you've yeah. just this pig from the stage. <laughs> Fresh. I, I love it. Fresh. <laughs> i love it i love it um so this question is a question i've asked every single artist in 2023 i was to be honest i was going to sack it off in 2024 but my beautiful wife to be rebecca was like no you are speaking to Bree 77 you need to bring this question back just for that i mean I, I have brought it back for every every guest this year but essentially when um spotify or amazon or one of these big corporate companies buys this podcast off me I, a normal person, would reinvest the money back in the podcast. I say, fuck that. We've done four years of this. We've had a good run. I'm going to invest the money in a festival instead, right? Breed 77 are invited to play the festival along with all the other artists that have been on the bill. It's going to be a long, lovely, eclectic bill. It's going to be great. But I need a festival rider. Now, from the festival rider, I'm asking every single band to submit something. Now, there's two things that I need to tell you. Firstly, there is no financial limitations. You can, because again, Spotify's hosting it or Amazon or whoever. We've got loads of money. It's fine. But also, there's no structural limitations. If you want a big fucking massive theme park at your first, as a rider, you can have it. We've already had one of those. But <laughs> what 
what I'd like to know is what you'd like to add. So to give you a little bit of context, we've had people say to me, I oh, um, um, so a gentleman called Josh who plays in a band in Cattle, Cattle Decapitation, can never say that in one, in one sentence, said to me, I just want a full laundry service. And I'm like, you're going to be everybody's best friend. I've had people say that they want weirdly specific like bottles of red wine that's like um, in France and like this is a particular region. They like 50 bottles every year or something stupid like that. What, I'd like to know is what you'd like to have on the ride. You can have whatever you like. <laughs> wow. Um, does it have to be within the bounds of legality? No, because <laughs> the first one I done this, the first, the first person I interviewed in 2023 was a guy called Adam uh, in a band called Polar, great band. He was like, "Can I have weed on the ride?" I was like, "You can absolutely fucking have weed on the ride. <laughs> it's, it's a dream festival. You're not going to get in any shit." So yeah, what would you like to have? Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, you know what I'd have? Ah. Mm. Uh... A ruddy porto that would take me right home after like I'm all wasted and just tired and I didn't have to travel anywhere, man. I just want to go like, you know, straight home, straight mm -hmm. home. When, when, you know, whenever I hit the portal, nice. that would be that would be my one. Nice. How, how about you, Danny? I, I don't know. My like my imagination. You don't want to know. Or, or, or it's too X-rated or anything. I can't say any stuff, mate. <laughs> I party hard, mate. But no, I don't know. Um, um, a swimming pool, maybe, will be nice. <laughs> nice. So, so in, in again, I, I tried to cover like a little bit of a scenario here. So, you've just played the show. Paul's already out. Paul's already at home. He's already in fucking Gibraltar <laughs> in, in, his, in his house. He's, he's lovely. You and the band are, are in the swimming pool. You're just chilling, and then you're going to get the bus back. Like, so, yeah, I mean, like, it seems like a it seems like a fair trade-off, I feel like. <laughs> yes, a sw swimming pool with a... With a big party afterwards. That's for me, mate. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. I love it. Um, I've got one final question for you both. It's a question I've asked every single artist who's been gracious enough to give me their time on this podcast, and I appreciate yours today. Um, it is a simple one. What is the best thing about being in Breed 77 for you guys individually? Uh, well, after so many years, the best thing is just making music and, and playing. That's uh, the main thing, really, like... Uh... I'm, um, there's no secret. It's just is it about the music. That's it. I love it. How are you, Paul? Yeah, like uh, having music that people like, you know, and people connect with. That's I think always been the the the, the crux. That's the 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 fuel that keeps us going. You know, like uh, if we weren't getting anything back, but people give us so much back. You know, like the we appreciate those who appreciate us, and uh, and it's such a gift it's amazing to be able to still be doing this and uh to be back very soon uh doing this better better harder louder than ever you know so uh yeah man music all the way i love it i've got one final uh thing that i need to ask of you boys if you are so willing and so kind essentially i've stolen this idea from diary of a ceo the podcast right his thing is he asks his guest to ask the next guest a question, right? So I've just recorded an interview with a band called El Muno, who, for the life of me, I don't know why, I call them El Munio, which I think I'm thinking of El Nino. That's where my brain just kept going. And it's really fucking lovely, lovely guys. Their question to you both was, if you could eat as much Marmite as you can, how much marmite do you think, bar, per jar, do you think you consume, can consume in an hour? In an hour? I mean, for I the like record, marmite. I like I, marmite. I fucking uh, hate I, it. I don't, I don't think, zero, I don't think I eat that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't had it in years. I haven't in years, but I could, ha I could have a, a tablespoon, a few tablespoons. For sure. I don't know. <laughs> Do you, do you I'd think say, I'd you say, say the jar. <laughs> it, it depends. It depends. Like if we're, if we're talking competitive eating, you know, then then mm. everything goes, you know. But like as a casual thing, a couple of tablespoons. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, gents. Um, Thank you, man. I, I hope everything goes uh, amazingly with the with the singles, with the album and stuff when it comes out. Um, and and I and I hope to catch you on the road very very soon. Thank you for your time and uh, Thanks, enjoy, mate. enjoy the rest of your Thanks, evening. Peace. Yeah, thank you.